It's Steve on the Guru Brew. Today I thought we would get into some CAD CAM stuff and start talking about the machines some more. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I have a couple CNC machines and I'll put the videos up here so you can watch them while I'm talking. These machines are useful for making really cool projects. And since I've showed off my machines, I've had quite a bit of interest from my viewers wanting to know more and how they can get into it themselves. Well, today I'm going to start a little tutorial and introduction to a piece of software called Mach 3. Mach 3 is a very interesting program as it controls the computer that is directly connected to a machine such as a CNC wood router. The board that I have in my hand right here is called a controller board. And this is plugged directly into a computer that runs the Mach 3 software. And then it tells the motors, such as this one, this is a stepper motor, tells it what position to move to. There's actually three of these motors inside um, a typical 3XS router. So they all need to know what to do and when to do it. So today we're going to start out with Mach 3. This is something that you can download and play with. I'll show you how to get started and the basics so you can explore what is possible and maybe possibly head you in the right direction. Okay, well, let's get started. So this video is Mach 3, the introduction for beginners coming up. The type of computer that is directly hooked to this board called the controller um, does not have to be a very special machine. In fact, the older XP's work great. That's what I use. Just an older Pentium machine that's running XP. This board that I'm holding is actually a board that I put together as a kit. And th this is known as the controller board. And there's a parallel port connection on here that goes right to the computer that runs this Mach 3 software that I'm going to show you. You can see that there's a motor connected to this board. And what happens is Mach 3 provides the instructions for these motors to turn. Not only does it turn the motors, but it takes care of any emergency stops and pausing tool changes and that sort of thing. I thought I would go ahead and show you this software because I'm familiar with it and it's widely used. It's it's almost an industry standard, really. Um, you know, professionals as well as a hobbyist alike like this software and use it, and I'm I'm pretty fond of it myself. As well as just running a machine, they also have plugins available that you can use to do other things such as my Xbox 360 controller here. I can actually use this to control the machine and move it about instead of using the arrow keys on the keyboard. So that's just one plug-in example. And I plan on showing you in another upcoming show how to go ahead and hook your Xbox up and install that plug-in. So look out for that. So I am at the Artsoft website. You can get to it by going to mocksupport.com and I'll put a link in the description. This is the home of the Mach 3 CNC software. And they have a few different products, but their main product is this Mach 3. Now I did notice that Mach 4 is coming soon, so I wonder what that's all about. That that sounds pretty interesting. I've actually been using this software for at least eight years on the two machines that I do have. So let's go ahead and load it up and we'll talk more about it and how it works and what to do with this software as we go. I'm going to go ahead and go to the software and downloads and there it is right there, Mach 3. So I'm going to click on that. And this software is currently $175 and that's a real steal. Trust me on this, look no more for CAM software. Mach 3 is a universal program that really can't be beat in my opinion. 
okay I'm gonna go ahead and go to the download page and we're just gonna go ahead and um, find our our link here I'm gonna take this Mach 3 add-ons included and go ahead and download that and save the file I'm gonna go ahead and put it to my desktop okay so when this finishes downloading I'll be back okay well the Mach 3 software has finished downloading let's go ahead and open up the folder here on my desktop and begin installing the software yes and I'm gonna go ahead and go next and agree to the licensing agreement here next I'm gonna take the default folder which is Mach 3 and I'm gonna leave all the program features to their default settings next now this question is asking me what kind of profile I would like to set up on my desktop icons and I have a mill type of machine that would be like a, a 3 axis CNC router a turn profile the second one here would be if you had such as a lathe and the third one is for plasma users so I'm going to go ahead and click on the mill profile and just leave the default okay and next and go ahead and start the install now while this is installing I would like to um, tell you that using a laptop to control your CNC machine is not a good idea if you plan on running a machine from a computer I recommend using a desktop. The reason why is laptops often have circuitry and other BIOS functions that are built in that save on power usage and it's not a good idea because laptops typically like to sleep or go in a standby mode to save power and really uh, the CNC software Mach 3 needs to uh, communicate with the processor full-time so the next question it's asking me here is to install the parallel port and this demo machine that I'm using does not have a parallel port so it should just error out and let me continue I can still play with the software okay and it's finished now when I click this finish my computer is going to reboot so I'm going to end the video here and I'll pick it back up as soon as my computer comes back all right well my software is now installed and my machine has been restarted so we're going to go ahead and open it up for the first time I wanted to go ahead and direct your attention back to the mocksupport.com website I wanted to show you something under the help and learning section here if you go to the video and tutorials you can see that they have an entire section devoted to Mach 3 and video tutorials to show you exactly how to configure and use this software the videos shown on this page go into great depths to help you to understand and use the software and they're very good so there's no point in me repeating most of the things here so when you have questions come here and watch these videos in addition they also have a users forum with a lot of smart people there that can help you if you have any questions uh, so I just wanted to show you that okay let's go ahead and go to our start menu here and look for our newly installed program we're looking for the Mach 3 software which is here and we're gonna click this Mach 3 loader okay okay so it's asking me what profile I want to start with and I'm gonna go ahead and start with this Mach 3 mill and you can see that it has a lathe and another type of mill here and a plasma cutter once you get a machine you will have to configure this software to match your machine so you will be creating a custom profile to use for your exact machine so a lot of custom settings will have to be built but for now for this demo 
purpose, we're just going to use the Mach 3 mill and that will closely simulate a 3-axis wood router. Well, here it is. Here is the Mach 3 software running now. You can see there's a lot of little boxes and numbers on it. It looks a little bit intimidating at first, but once you learn what all the sections are, it's not that bad. This box right here will contain the G-code, and we'll load a file in there in just a moment. The G code is written with another program that we're not covering in this video. This program takes the G code and goes from there. Over in this area, you can see that there are X, Y, and Z, and a zero for our different accesses on our machine. And the number associated with it is the measurement that's currently assigned like 2.55 is the X position. It's 2.55 inches from the home position. And the Y would be minus 3.4420 inches from the home position. If you would like to change your, your, measure, your measurements, your native units, you can come to the config area here and change it for metric if you want to use metric instead. Over here is a little preview window, and when we load our G-code, you will see an image of what is to be cut in this area, and you can twiddle it and, and move it around. These are the actual controls to start the machine and stop it and pause it and reset it, as well as some other commands that uh, will help you to run your machine. This box here shows you the current tool that you'll be using. So if you're using an end mill, 0.25, it will say so here. Also during tool changes, it will give you the uh, next tool in line in the status bar here. This box right here is our feed rate and we can make the machine go faster or slower by manually moving the plus and minus sign. And you might want to slow the machine down a bit if you're cutting into things that are more critical. Over here is the spindle uh, speed. If you have a programmable spindle, you can adjust how many revolutions per minute it spins. So I'm going to show you um, how to load up a sample piece of G-code that's included with this Mach 3 software. Let's go to File, Load G-Code here. And we're going to look in the Mach 3 folder found in our C directory. We're going to look down through till we find a folder called G-Code, which is here. And then under All Files, make sure that it is set for All Files, like mine is here. And you'll see a roadrunner.tap, and that is just a demo um, piece of um, G-Code. So let's go ahead and open that. Well, you can see that a bunch of numbers and symbols have showed up here in this G-code box. This is actually the line numbers that will control how our machine is run. And you can see over here in the preview window a outline of a road runner. So this will be the actual live preview that will refresh and show you actually where your cutter is currently positioned. If I was to reset this button right here, this is the emergency um, button, and the machine always starts with the emergency button on so that everything is off on the machine. So when you start the machine up, you must reset the machine first, okay? Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and click the cycle button here, and you can see that these numbers are starting to move and you're also seeing the crosshairs in the preview showing what part of the graphic is currently being worked on. And this little arrow right here in the preview window, this green arrow, shows the current location of our z-axis and our z-axis is actually the spindle that's moving up and down to plunge it into the material and then take it out. 
So you can see that we're about four inches on our X and Y and our Z is currently in the material 0 0.10 inches. These G code commands are processed one by one and you can see it does one at a time. It moves to that location and then it processes the next one. You can use the stop and the uh, feed hold to pause if you'd like. You can also increase the speed at which the cutter cuts by clicking on these or you can reset to the default like this. I'm going to go ahead and stop this preview for just a moment. If you were to go ahead and move the tool manually using your keyboard, you can use the up and down key as well as the left and right arrow key to manually move your position like I'm doing right here. You can see that the uh, Y is currently going in a positive direction. If I hit the down arrow, it goes in a negative direction. And if I hit the um, right arrow, it will make my X go in a positive direction and left would be a negative direction for the X. And then to move the Z axis, the actual spindle up and down, you can use the page up and page down. Now if this machine were actually hooked to a CNC machine, my actions on the keyboard would actually move the machine around. If I want to return home, and I had mentioned in another video that every machine has a home position, if this were a piece of wood that I was wanting to cut, most generally you would reference one of the corners or dead center as a home position. And that home position is where you would start and stop every time. I like to select this corner down here as my home position. And when it's in the home position, everything is at zero. If you look up here at my, my X position, I can click this button right here and it will automatically zero that as well as the other ones. And you can also tell that the crosshair has come down to my lower left hand corner, which I like to call zero. And then if I start my code back up, it would start from that position. So, you know, this software is very useful, even if you don't have a machine, just to learn about how to set this up. And you can actually watch a simulation of a cut, which is pretty neat. I do encourage you to go back and watch your videos to learn more. You can see that underneath these tabs, there are many more things that you can play with. You can set up tool paths and, and do manual commands. You can set up offsets for fixtures. There's also a settings tab which will help you to set your machine up for the first time as well as tweak it. And then there's a diagnostics tab which is useful in troubleshooting and setting up a controller board for the first time with this software you can actually see what pins are on as far as the parallel port pins by looking at these input and output signals. So I think we're going to leave it here for now with our Mach 3 introduction. Now it's just a matter of you going and downloading this and trying out their trial version. The trial version will go on as long as you want it to. It has no limitations except for when you actually hook it to a machine, there's only so many lines of code that will be able to be run. So good luck with that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.